A lie unchallenged becomes the truth. If Michael Jackson was on a propofol infusion or a drip, I would be completely responsible for not monitoring him. But he was not. And here is why. medical expert Dr. Stephen Schaefer gave his opinion as far as the cause of death. Schaefer's opinions were apnea, which was the cause of Michael Jackson's death, and that means that he stopped breathing. He also stated that Michael Jackson was on one, 100 milliliter propofol infusion infused over a three-hour period, starting at 9 o'clock and ending around 12 noon, which is the time he died. and ending around 12 noon, which is the time he died. Brian Oxman is an attorney for the Jackson family. He joins us from the UCLA Medical Center, where he spent a good portion of this day. Good, morning, uh, good evening, sir. Hello, Harry. How are you? It is a very sad day for me here. I am heartbroken. What was it like to be with members of Michael's family today? I got a call uh, just a little bit before noon that Michael had been taken from the hospital by Randy's assistant who gave me that call. Brian Oxman is an attorney for the Jackson family. He joins us from the UCLA Medical Center where he spent a good portion of this day. Good, mor uh, good evening, sir. Hello, Harry. How are you? It is a very sad day for me here. I am heartbroken. What was it like to be with members of Michael's family today? I got a call uh, just a little bit before noon that Michael had been taken from the hospital by Randy's assistant who gave me that call. Jerry King of Pop, Michael Jackson, passed away on Thursday, June 25th, 2009 at 2.26 p.m. It is believed he suffered cardiac arrest in his home. However, the cause of his death is unknown until results of the autopsy are known. He also stated and claimed boldly that Michael Jackson died on a propofol infusion drip that was running. Other issues with the case involve alteration of evidence inside and outside of the court by court officials. And there were clearly a number of collusions between the chief prosecutor, David Walgren, with the witnesses aligning their statements, especially that of Alberto Alvarez, Elisa Fleek, and Dr. Stephen Schaefer, the chief medical expert for the, for the prosecution. This is an example, <clears throat> it's a schematic diagram that summarizes Dr. Schaefer's testimony. <clears throat> As you can see, the infusion of saline that's being washed through the tube combines at the point with propofol which then runs into Mr. Jackson's leg. This is the concoction that was presented to the jury. This represents a cut saline bag with a bottle of propofol being hung from inside of the bag. That is absolutely useless and it's not a theory that I have ever seen. Actually, the very first time I encountered this presentation was in the court. Even though my past experience working as a clinical, critical cardiologist and being exposed to propofol and its use for so, so many decades, I had never seen anybody done that. But I strongly suggest that this catheter was into Mr. Jackson's IV site. What you need to know is that Dr. Schaefer, in April of 2001, prepared a report for the prosecution. This report, however, described Alberto Alvarez seeing 
a bottle in a bag and seen white substance in the bag, which was probably propofol. Schaefer made a report stating that Alberto Alvarez made this statement by his testimony. But it was not until two weeks after um, Dr. Schaefer had written his report, Alberto Alvarez was taken to the district attorney's office for the very first time to identify these ev ev matters of evidence and asked to redraw an image of a bag which he had drawn several months before. Take a look as we go through. And what you're doing now is what? So I'm now putting the tab back, or it was found, and placing this inside the bag. And this is the profile bottle? And that being the profile bottle. And then using that to support the profile bottle like that. And does the propofol then, in this setup, continue to, uh, to drip and infuse into the patient if this had been utilized? Yes, there's no, there's no difference in the plumbing from the bag and the propofol is suspended inside the bag. The absurd hanging contraption. Two tubings and a cut sailing bag to hang a propofol infusion, that's absurd. That's deception. Dr. Schaefer had his own demonstrative bottle. You saw that. He had pulled a tab. He had hanged the bottle. The DA picks up the actual evidence which was found at the scene, and he altered that evidence in the courtroom to fit their theory of hanging a drip an officer of the court. Look at it again. This time, I want you to listen to the sound when the DA gets up and walks to the camera with his back to the camera, and he continues to pull that tab open. Then he hangs, he sticks his finger through the tab and asks Dr. Schaefer, does this have the same hanging tab as the demonstration, as the one you just used for demonstration? He's an educated man. He'd been in law for the longest while. Couldn't he see it was the same thing? Why destroy the evidence? And especially in open court, what is his motive? In a, his motive, of course, is to win. It's not about justice. This was unfair and not justified. Take a look at Dr. Schaefer's hand after their call to the side bench. And you would see Dr. Schaefer is trying to replace that hanging de device around the propofol bottle. I call that probably, you decide, is that collusion? Take a look once more. Did you hear that sound? No, you did not. But this is what happened. He altered evidence at open court. Evidence number 30. That is the actual evidence discovered at the scene. Describe what you're doing right now to hang it. There's a little label right here, a little plastic label, a little, little plastic strip, intended to hang this from an ID pole. Now watch the prosecutor. He's going to come, put his back to the camera, <clears throat> and he is going to and alter the evidence. Listen to it when he pops it. Listen carefully. Looking at people's 30. There it is. Does this contain the same He just popped it. Stick his hand to the actual evidence item. Used to hang it. Yes, and they're called to the side bank. Decal apparatus. Right there and then. Dr. Sure. Schaefer is going to help him by trying to replace that, eye, that strap on the bottle. He should not have done that. He is a witness and an expert. There's no reason to replace what was just destroyed. So this is what happened after this occurred. They stopped court, they placed the jury in the jury's box. I went to a side courtroom and broke down. I wanted to shout, jump, ball. It was horrible. And this is what happened when the, when the defense team went to the sidebar. They approached the judge and said that Mr. Walgren just altered a piece of evidence, exhibit number 30, that was extremely important to the defense. And the judge, before anything else, this is his answer. 
This is testimony. This is the court record, and you haven't seen that. This, these were his words. He didn't open it. Mr. Walgren, with a very tremulous at this time, admitted, yes, 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 Your Honor, I did. As a result of this, they went into a stipulation of fact to say that this occurred. But the stipulation was not agreed on by me up till today. My defense attorney accepted the DA to make a statement saying that he did it for demonstrative purposes. It was not. It was ill intent and deliberate. Take a look. Thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Walden, it's my understanding that the parties have uh, entered into a stipulation. Yes, may I read it? This yes, time? and ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Walden is going to read the stipulation. That stipulation is also going to be provided to you in written form as People's 221. So this uh, stipulation in writing is 221, and Mr. Walden will read it uh, a little slowly. Thank you. Should I? For demonstrative purposes, the tap handle on People's 30 has been lifted from the bottle by the People's Attorney. However, at the time People's 30 was recovered, the tap handle was intact, unused, and attached to the bottle. Unused. Unattached. Is that stipulated by the people, Mr. Walton? It is, Your Honor. Thank you. By the defense, Mr. Chernoff. It is. Thank you. Never used to hang a, as, a, as part of any drip. This was wrong. You can read it yourself. But I'll just touch a few things. A person who commits a crime of tampering with evidence, when he or she knowingly alters, conceals, falsifies, or destroys any record, document, or a tangible object with the intent to interfere with an investigation possible proceedings by the federal government, that is punishable and alters evidence to win. They both become judges. They are the ones that will judge you today, your children, your parents, your friends, and your neighbors. In this section, I'm going to introduce Alberto Alvarez. As you remember, Mr. Alvarez is the one who said I, uh, I told him to remove items from the IV stand and to put it away. That did not happen. He is the one who also demonstrated or told the court that he had seen a white substance in the bottom of a saline bag with a bottle propped up in the bag. That, too, did not happen. That same bag was tested by the coroner's office. They could not find residue nor propofol in that bag. I will take you to Alberto Alvarez's statement, and I will show you some other things that he did for the DA. When you removed the uh, saline bag from the IV stand, did you notice anything unusual about that saline bag? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I recall that um, while I was uh, uh, detaching it from the IV stand, um, the bag was at my eye level, so I was able to notice that there was a, ba a bottle out of this, uh, the ba this bag. When you removed the saline bag from the IV stand, uh, was this the type of, uh, well, let me show you. Uh, does that appear, uh, by everything you can tell on the appearance of the bottle, does that appear to be the same bottle that you saw inside of that saline bag? Yes, sir. Okay. Propofol bottle now inside of the saline bag. Uh, does this accurately represent what you saw hanging from the IV stand on June 25th, 2009? Yes, sir. Okay. And as it is depicted in this bag with the metal rimmed stopper toward the bottom of the bag, toward the port, was that uh, in which the bottle was uh, seated inside the bag? Yes, sir. Okay. And was it slightly sideways uh, as well as reflected in its current state. Um, yes, sir, it was a little bit more 
towards this area of the stop room. Okay. More toward the side? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, may I publish this to the well, jury? Let's just find out, because Mr. Alvarez just uh, manipulated a little bit. Do you... I remember seeing it like like that, sir. Okay. Like that. So and you've indicated uh, uh, on a kind of a diagonal within the bag. Is that accurate? Correct. Yes, okay. sir. You've testified that this, I believe your testimony is this is the bag that you saw. That, that appears to be the bag that I saw. How, yes, do, you, how do you know? It looks exa it looks like the one I, I took off the stancer. And um, you notice here this particular bag that appears to be the exact bag you saw has no milky substance in it. Yes, sir. I see that. You also remember that the coroner's office did test that bag and they could not find any white milky substance nor any residue of propofol. You, uh, you've shown, a, a picture was shown to the jury. <coughs> it's titled uh, People's Exhibit Number 27. Let's take a look at it. And you were saying it's, uh, it's your picture, you drew it, and you did a poor job. Is yes, sir. Right? When did you draw this picture? I'm sorry. When did you draw this picture? Um, I believe it was um, uh, back when we were supposed to start the trial. Um, I think it was May. So, Alvarez saw this drawing for the first time just about two years after Michael Jackson had passed. The very first time he saw the drawing was in May, prior to us starting the trial. Uh, People's Exhibit Number 27. Let's take a look at it. And you're saying it's, uh, it's your picture, you drew it, and you did a poor job. Yes, sir. Right? When did you draw this picture? I'm sorry? When did you draw this picture? Um, I believe it was... Um, uh, back when we were supposed to start the trial, um, I think it was May. It could have been May or, or April, April or May of this year, of 2010. Uh, you drew it after the preliminary hearing? Yes, sir. This, however, is not the first picture that you drew of this IV bag, is it? People's Exhibit 27, did you draw this for the prosecutors? Section of A. Along with the objection. Do you understand the question? Um, no, I don't, sir. Sustained on the ground. We asked, who asked you to draw this picture? Um, uh, Mr. Uh, prosecutor? Yes, sir. Do you know him as a prosecutor? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, and this was last time that we were preparing for trial. He asked you to draw this picture, right? Correct. Sir. Alberto Alvarez also held the bags with his bare hands. And he'll demonstrate to you how he did it. And we'll see whether or not there were fingerprints of any kind. After you you made this statement for the first time, which was August 31st, 2009, is that right? That is correct. That was the very first time you told anybody about taking down IV bags. Correct. Right? After that time, you were, you were fingerprinted. Correct. Where were you fingerprinted? I was fingerprinted at uh, my attorney's office. He held it was back. On the, on the little hook of the IV stamp. Well, let, let me stop you right there. It was a curly hook, right? That's correct. Is that what you're saying? That, that's what I'm saying. All right. And I proceeded to grab it from the top, and I took it out, out of the hook, and then I grabbed it with one hand, and I dropped it in the blue bag that he instructed me to. You just saw that you used both hands? Correct. You did use both hands? Yes, sir. The finger, I mean, you indicated for the record both hands at the very top of Yes. You didn't wear any gloves, did you? No, sir. You saw Alberto Alvarez held the bag with both hands, but you also saw him trying to distance himself as far as far away as possible from that bag. But he was not wearing gloves. He held it with both hands. Here is another image 
to describe Alberto Alvarez holding the bag with bare hands. No gloves. No fingerprints on anything. And I would underscore anything. Alberto Alvarez was not telling the truth. But he was motivated to embellish a story because he was being paid by the tabloids. The, as, as noted, the, when you first reported all of these events, it was two months after Michael Jackson had died, right? Uh, yes, sir. And prior to that time, <coughs> you had already received offers from the media for your story. And who did you receive media offers from? Uh, various uh, media outlets, sir. Well, you, you received some August 31st? Um, I, I probably did, yes. And you received some before August 31st? Correct. August 31st. Yes. So who did you receive offers from before August 31st? I don't recall exactly who, sir. Well, was it the, the mail? Uh, yes. London mail? Yes. Dressed in a black suit and soft-spoken, Prince described his father as a nurturer and teacher. But Prince appeared to choke up when questioned about the day his father died. He testified that the king of pop was excited about the comeback tour. But in the weeks leading up to his death, he became really, really skinny, and his body temp would go up and down. Prince said his father would cry after phone calls, saying, quote, they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. According to Prince, he was referring to AEG Live CEO Randy Phillips and his ex-manager, Dr. Tomei Tomei.